going on guys? Welcome back to another video and welcome to a new camera. I'm recording on the new Sony RX100 Mark 7. It's Sony's latest generation of point and shoot. I'm hoping that it's a nice improvement for focus issues that we had previously from the Canon G7X. So we'll see how this video plays out. We're over here at the shop heating things up because it is a cool day and we've got the 2020 Denali pulled in as we have to knock out some basic routine maintenance on this thing before we head out into the world today to see the mini Max and how it's doing. I did just get a text from Sean at Dieselwork saying that they're going to be installing the heads back on the truck today. They're going to be doing the head studs and they're going to basically be reassembling the whole truck so that way it has no coolant leaks and we are sealed, signed, and delivered to safely make some reliable power. But before we do that, we do have to rotate around the wheels and tires on the Denali. I've got about 6,000 miles on this setup already, which is pretty crazy. Nearly 7,000 miles on the truck since I bought it back in July. Racking up the miles quickly and with that we got to make sure that these big mud tires wear evenly because I can tell you what the front of these tires are already starting to get pretty ripped up. So while we had the front passenger side off and the rear driver side off as we're rotating front to back, side to side, I wanted to take a minute to give you guys an update as to how these Furies are wearing. All right, guys, so this is the deal. My tires are all screwed up because I didn't do one thing, like an idiot, but it was kind of intentional idiotism. Is idiotism a word? If it is, Great, if it isn't, fine, I don't care. But basically, my tires look the way that they do. Obviously, they're mounted on the truck right now because I didn't get an alignment when I decided to crank in the torsion keys to push down the geometries of the front end to clear the bigger wheel and tire setup without having to cut my bumper or my cab. So here is your back tire. If we just kind of slim down and we give a small little profile look of the tread, you can see that the wear is pretty even. It's not like the outer knobbies are higher than the inner knobbies. It's not like you're really seeing a big difference between the overall wear on the back. And that's because this tire is just rolling straight the whole time. It's not like there's any pivoting or turning going on. And the big reason why we do these rotations at low intervals like this is because of the wear that you start to see on the front. We're going to come down here and what I want you to pay close attention to is the left side and the right side outer knobbies versus the inners. You can see there's a big difference in the height of the outer knobby to the inner knobby. And now of course through camera it's not going to be coming through all that clear but there is a very visible difference between how the outer knobbies are wearing versus the inners. And then if we bring it over here, you can see that again, it's not as dramatic, but there is still a big difference. And right there, you can really see the change. Now, when we look at this, you can actually see that these knobbies, being that they're on the outside, are wearing down extremely fast and on an angle. They're actually not wearing flat. You can see that they're kind of a little bit slanted like this. That's because we are always turning with these tires. So on the outside, as you turn, the back side of the knobby is actually taking more abuse than the front side. And then on the inside, it's kind of the opposite. So I was actually expecting to see some of this, but I didn't expect it to this degree. And I would say that this explains a lot of the noise that comes from these Furies. And the whole importance of doing the rotation is to allow these tires to level out in the rear and then of course start to wear these down a little bit more on the front. Your front tires are gonna wear down dramatically faster than the ones in the rear, unless you're doing burnouts all the time. But I am extremely surprised by the amount of wear that we're already starting to see take place on these front ones and that's really why I wanted to get them rotated. If you're in the market for quiet tires, I wouldn't suggest going Furies, but if you wanna pull something off like me with a unique setup where we're just leveled, running a 2414 American American force wheel, negative 73 offset backspacing with a 33, 14 and a half tire that has just a little bit of stretch and no trimming on a truck, you kind of have to conform to whatever options are available in the market to make that work. And in just 5,000 miles, you saw the result of how bad those tires got torn up because of the caster and the toe that were not adjusted up front. That is why that happened. When I first pulled them off, I'm like, hmm. This is interesting. And then I went home and then I'm here now and I'm thinking as I was just about to take the Denali off the jack stands, well, I think that I know the reason why. And that's because I never got my alignment. Go me. But here's the reason why. 
As you guys know, I've been talking about lifting the Denali. We've been talking about what kits we want to do. We've been talking about the why. We want to get more rubber on the road. Although this setup looks absolutely amazing. I think I'm going to miss it, but I think I'm going to like the lifted setup too. So long story short, when I bought this truck, I was like, we're absolutely lifting it without a doubt. This wheel and tire setup kind of just came into my world made it work and it's awesome. But I knew when I put this setup together that I'd be ultimately changing it in a short time afterwards. And that's where we kind of are right now because the lift kit should be coming in soon. So back to my point and my decision, I never actually ended up getting an alignment done because of that reason. I didn't want to pay the money to get the alignment done just to pay money again to get another one done. And well, now you can see why people encourage you do alignments because it could really wear down your tires like really fast. I mean, we've only got 5,000, maybe about 5,500 miles on the setup and you guys saw just how crazy the difference is between the fronts and the back. So now we have the nice even ones up front and then the not so even ones out back and we're just gonna have to keep going like back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Uh, yeah, until we get it lifted and ultimately put a bigger rubber on the wheel. So we're gonna go ahead and finish this up real quick. We gotta get the truck off the jack stands and we gotta get over to Diesel Works because they're actually working on the Minimax right now and we gotta make sure we can film some of it. Boys and girls, welcome Long Bed Larry back to the vlog. Oh, it's good to be back. We haven't been behind the wheel of this truck on the channel for a little while, which means that we should probably do a cold start. question is, is one of you guys ready to take this truck home? Because I can guarantee one of you is going to be getting a call very soon to come take this truck home and $5,000 cash in the center console. It's gonna be a great day for one of you. And I'm excited to find out which one of you it's gonna be. Oh, the stealth boys, the stealth. Here we go, here we go, here we go. There's two types of yields in the world. There's those that you have to make and there's those that you really like to enjoy and I can guarantee you that the latter is one that you're gonna experience in this truck. Because damn, it is nice, real nice. There's a suspicious Ford up here. It has blue plates on it and if you're from PA, you know what that means. I think we're just gonna stay right back here, boys, and maintain our uh, un undeniability of Doing the speed limit. Because we are law abiding citizens around these parts. My daily debate, do I send it for that exit or do I just move over? Ah, I guess I'm a wimp. We're moving over. Oh, we'll floor down the exit. Here we go, here we go, here we go! Okay, so, oh, brakes, 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 brakes. I gotta constantly remind myself that it's not a race car, but it's fast enough to be one. And some exhaust clips. Ah. <laughs> I don't know if you guys are ready for this thing. Long bed Larry. Calm yourself down here, Jesus. It's the morning, jeez, it ain't even time to get rowdy. Camera check for the focus, boys, is it good? If you like this change, I think this video deserves a big old thumbs up. If you haven't already, smash that like button. I appreciate you guys. If you haven't already, definitely, definitely consider subscribing. It's nice to have you along. Look at that focus. Oh, oh boy, turn it around and we are golden. Nice. Dang, that thing's fun. Oh boys, it looks like the Hummer's back. If you guys don't remember that video or you never seen it, or maybe you were never with the YouTube channel at that time, I reviewed that LBZ swap 700 horsepower Duramax. If you wanna check that video out, I'm actually gonna throw that link right up there. Some good nostalgia right there. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Diesel Works LLC. They are taking care of, not abiding by policy. Oh, guys, I can't believe you. Just kidding, we are in here. We got Tyler working on the LLY with the LBZ front end and a big old fix vein in the valley. Things are getting cleaned up here. Good morning, sir. Good morning. How are you, buddy? Pretty good. Looks like they're nice and shiny since the last time I've seen them. Yeah, all cleaned up. Wow, looking good in the neighborhood. We're eating clean here, boys. So if you guys didn't see the video where we pulled the heads off of the Minimax, you can actually see. <laughs> Here is one of the old head gaskets. I don't know if this is the one that lifted or not, but we did in fact find that one of the head gaskets did in fact break on the Minimax. We were pushing this thing for a little while, having a lot of fun, waiting for the day of detriment to arrive. Well, it never really actually happened like as intense as I was kind of picturing it to be, maybe like an unrealistic expectation. But when we pulled the passenger side head off, we did find that the passenger side back cylinder did in fact 
lift one of the head gaskets. So it was probably good that we did this when we decided to. So what were done to these things when they were sent out? Usually he'll check this surface to make sure it's completely flat. And then if it's not completely flat, he'll machine it down just to show it's, you know, a nice clean surface. Um, I think he takes the valves out, checks them and everything, cleans all that up. Putting your valve seals in or not. They look like they're nice and lubed up and whatnot. Make sure they're all good to go. Yeah, it's an opportunity to check on everything while it's off because this doesn't see the light of day much. Make sure there's no cracks when you turn it in. So the reason they machine it is because um, sometimes when they lift, they could actually warp a little bit. And then when you put it back on, it wouldn't lay flat and it would basically leak. That would be a bad situation. Sweet, I'm glad they're back, ready to rock and roll. Oh my God. I thought this dude was gonna pull me over, man. He was grilling me. After I left Tropical Smoothie there just for a quick little lunch, got in my truck, he was staring me down. And I was like, all right, I'm gonna turn my camera on for this because I really don't have a good gut feeling. Woo. So I did, threw it in drive, saw him throw it in drive because he was looking at me. Pull out, he pulls out. He's rushing up behind me, stop at the stop signs, all that stuff. And then he throws his lights on and boy, I thought he was, I, I, Dang, I thought we were just about to have a video and title idea right there, boys and girls, by this dude stalking us, but luckily, it wasn't for us. Stalking somebody else now. I'm happy I turned my camera on for that one. I was like, yeah, I don't know if I should be recording this, but I kind of just went with my intuition. Thank God we're not getting pulled over. Although we didn't do anything wrong, it would have just, yeah, I guess it would have uh, thrown off my schedule a little bit for the afternoon. So yeah, I, I did just grab lunch, and we are headed back to Dieselworks to get another quick update as to where Tyler is with the reassembly of the Minimax. That was a close one. Oh, look at this focus, man. This this Sony RX 107 is pretty impressive. It's like picking up my eyes. The autofocus, everything looks so good. And you guys know we got ourselves this coffee. We absolutely needed a coffee. So we're stepping back into the shop. Let's see where our main man Tyler is. Oh, it looks like uh, the Mini Max has a 12 valve first gen friend here. Nice. This thing's pretty clean. Two single cabs holding it down. Oh boy. Looks like we're putting the uh, what the valve train back in. All of our what rockers. Let it burn like the tropics on my pockets, crave is profits. I'm obnoxious to a nuisance, rocking J's out here hooping. Hidden in my hoodie from the haters, f the drama. I was saying to show the world that dealing with a problem from the get go. Let's go, ready for the next show. Boys and girls, we're back outside, and this coffee is just so delicious. I know you guys were curious. Dunkin' coffee, oh, cheers to that. We unfortunately have to head out for the day. I've got uh, some things that I need to take care of with the wife here, but Tyler's still got a good amount of work ahead of him, and unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to take home the Mini Max today or take it out for its first drive. It's a very tedious process to make sure that the valve train is completely in sync with the bottom end. Being that the head was off and some of the valves were moved around a little bit, he's gotta go through and adjust all of those. Then he's gotta get the valve covers back on and sealed up. Then it's the process of reassembling everything else. The electronics, the fuel system, the Y bridge, all the piping, all of the electronics, all of that stuff needs to get done still. And Dieselworks is taking care of us big time. Thank you guys so much for the hospitality and thank you so much for allowing us as always to jump inside with the camera to bring all of you along for the ride. There's a lot of work to be done and I'm also super appreciative of Tyler letting us kind of hang out along the way. I know that at times it can be a little you know curious when you're hanging out and somebody's kind of watching and filming the whole time but Tyler cheers to you my friend you're a trooper. So we're jumping back in Long Bed Larry. We're gonna go to the house. I gotta knock some stuff out there and then hopefully we're gonna get over to Home Depot. I wanna take advantage of his long bed for one of the last times that I'll be able to do so because we are in the stages right now of my basement project where I need drywall and it's four by eight. And well, boys, we got an eight foot bed and I gotta take full advantage of it before one of you takes it off my hands. I'm blown away by the fact that Dream Diesel giveaway number six just ended and I've already received a slew of messages asking when the next one is gonna go live. And being that you're so curious, well, Dream Diesel giveaway number seven, surprise number seven, is coming right here in the next about week. So uh, bear with me, but something, something is in store. And well, well, yeah, it's 
It's gonna be awesome. Man, the focusing on this camera is just worlds better. It's so relieving. As a YouTuber, you wanna depend on your equipment and you wanna know that it's gonna work when you need it, how you need it, and you want it to provide a quality product so that everybody can enjoy it from the point of creating the content to editing the content for all of you guys to watch. I know that those focusing issues were, were quite annoying and luckily we're past that now. So hopefully this piece of equipment is going to give us what we need for a long period of time until I guess the, the next latest and greatest thing comes out. So we're back at the house now. You can see right here, we got a ton of drywall behind me. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you saw that I picked that up with Long Bed Larry utilizing that eight foot bed and it was really nice because we could close the tailgate up and not risk breaking any of this or losing any of it. On the ride home, we've got a lot of housing renovations that are taking up my time, finishing the basement right now, framed it out myself, did the insulation myself, had some assistance from my boy Andre to run the electrical, but then I did the switches and all the receptacles and outlets and all that. Now we're gonna be doing some drywall. I got a buddy coming over here shortly to help me move all this downstairs. And that's where we're gonna be. So the lesson of today, ladies and gentlemen, is always get your alignment done if you're gonna be running mud tires. Don't do what I did. Just do it right and you're gonna save yourself some time and of course you're gonna get more bang for your buck with these tires. Now, I don't expect these things to last like 50,000 miles. I think that's just an unrealistic expectation for the amount of weight rubber that we have on the road plus the aggression of the tire, but get the alignment done. Don't be a me and don't make that mistake because I probably put 15,000 miles worth of wear on 5,000 miles worth of use. And that really doesn't feel all that good. So with that said, the last takeaway from this video is the Long Bed Larry announcement. That is going to be right right around December 6th through the 9th. So that's gonna be coming up, and then we've got a surprise giveaway to end the year, which is Dream Diesel giveaway number seven. And with that one, guys, we're gonna go out with a bang. So with that being said, I'm headed in the basement. We got some work to do. My like legal, if you guys do, shoot the best. Tap that subscribe button if you haven't already, and I'll see y'all in the next upload.